This video will discuss the assessment and management of skin side effects in children taking targeted therapies. If you are a healthcare provider for a child on a targeted therapy, either a BRAF or MEK inhibitor, you may be aware that these medications can have side effects related to the skin. Side effects are very common. In fact, some studies show up to 100% of patients on targeted therapies have changes in the skin. In this module, we will review how to estimate body surface area and determine the grade of skin side effects, as well as how to identify and manage common skin side effects of BRAF and MEK inhibitors. First, we'll learn how to estimate the affected body surface area, or BSA. One method for estimating BSA is the rule of nines. Using the rule of nines, each leg represents 18% of total body surface area, or TBSA. Each arm represents 9%. The anterior and posterior trunk each represent 18%. The head represents 9%, leaving 1% for the genitalia and perineum. It's important to note that only the affected skin should be included in the BSA calculation, not the whole area. For example, if a small area of the leg is affected, this does not mean that the BSA is 18%. To accurately calculate BSA, you need to imagine the areas of rash grouped together before applying the rule of nines. Now for smaller scattered lesions, the palm method may be more useful. Using the palm method, the entire palmar surface of the child's hand, including fingers, is approximately 1% of TBSA. Knowing how to estimate the BSA will help us determine the grade of the reaction. Grading is based on Common Terminology Criteria for Adverse Events, or CTCAE. Generally, for skin rashes, grade 1 is mild, covering less than 10% of body surface area. Grade 2 is moderate, covering 10 to 30%. Grade 3 is severe, covering over 30% of body surface area. Grade 4 is life-threatening, generalized with mucosal involvement. And grade 5 is reserved for death. For the specific grading of a given side effect, please refer to the CTCAE. Body surface area may not apply to all skin toxicities. Criteria may require you to ask about the patient's activities of daily living, the presence of tenderness, or other associated symptoms. You can download the CTCAE app to your mobile device to help you with this. This grading system provides a stepwise approach to managing the patient. While specific toxicities may be managed differently, generally, for grade 1, we observe and treat topically. For grade 2, we observe more carefully, optimize topical treatment, and consider systemic treatment. For grade 3, we stop or decrease medication and provide more aggressive treatment. For grade 4, we admit the patient to hospital for management. And grade 5, as mentioned, is death associated with drug toxicity. You may be able to manage grade 1 to 2 side effects without specialist referral. However, consider referral to dermatology for more severe side effects, if there are multiple or unusual skin reactions, or if the suggested treatments have failed. Accurate grading is critical because it will prevent unnecessary discontinuation or dose reduction of the patient's life-saving therapy. Now let's move on to identify common skin side effects of BRAF and MEK inhibitors and learn about their management. For BRAF inhibitors, common side effects include morbilliform rash, photosensitivity, palmar plantar hyperkeratosis, verrucal keratosis, alopecia, curling of the hair, keratosis pilaris, paniculitis, seborrheic dermatitis, and eruptive nevi. Let's go through each one by one. A morbilliform rash is maculopapular. This means that there are macules, which are flat, discolored spots on the skin, as well as papules, which are raised bumps. Lesions are often on the torso and extremities, but spare the head and neck. For treatment, counsel the patient on gentle skin care. You can refer to our videos on tips for gentle skin care for more details. For grade 1 toxicities, emollients are sufficient. For grades 2 and 3, the patient can use oral antihistamines. Mid to high potency topical steroids like betamethasone valerate 0.05 or 0.1% or mometasone can also be considered. 
Ointments are preferred over cream since they are generally more effective. For more severe or refractory eruptions, consider oral steroids. At times, dose reductions or temporary holds of the medication might be indicated. Targeted therapies may make the skin more sensitive to the sun by decreasing the threshold for sunburn and UV-induced skin damage. A patient with photosensitivity may present with blistering and painful erythema from brief sun exposure. The patient should be counseled on strict sun protection. Please refer to our video on tips for sun protection for more details. Palmar plantar hyperkeratosis is characterized by redness or yellowish thickening of the palms and soles at pressure points. More severe eruptions may lead to deep fissuring, pain, and difficulty with ambulation. To treat palmar plantar hyperkeratosis, counsel all patients about gentle skin care and reducing friction with supportive socks or shoes. Patients should be counseled to not walk around barefoot or wear tight or ill-fitting shoes. For grade 1, the patient can use thick emollients at bedtime with occlusion as well as topical keratolytics such as urea 20% cream. For grade 2, consider topical steroids class 1 or 2, topical anesthetics, oral analgesics, and antiseptic soaks. For grade 3, dermatology consultation is required for consideration of systemic retinoids. Treatment interruption may be needed. Verrucal keratosis is characterized by verruciform, wart-like, white, keratotic papules. It is often widespread in distribution and infects both photoexposed and non-photoexposed skin. If the patient is symptomatic or you're unsure of the diagnosis, refer to dermatology. The lesion needs to be monitored for changes suggestive of squamous cell carcinoma. Non-scarring alopecia can be treated with topical minoxidil 2-5%. Long-term treatment, usually for 6 months or more, is required to observe any improvement. Treatments must be continued indefinitely to maintain these improvements. Other changes seen in the hair with BRAF inhibitors include curling of the hair. Keratosis pilaris presents as diffuse keratotic papules in a generalized distribution and may be accompanied by significant pruritus. Treatment includes counseling on gentle skin care. For grade 1, the patient can use emollients and topical keratolytics such as urea, alpha-hydroxy acids, salicylic acid, and retinoids. For grades 2 and 3, consider topical steroids and oral antihistamines. Keratosis pilaris is generally self-limited. Paniculitis involves inflammation of the subcutaneous fat, resulting in painful nodules under the skin. It affects the upper and lower extremities and may be associated with arthralgias. For treatment, NSAIDs can provide analgesia, and a short course of oral steroids may be considered. Refer to dermatology for advice on treatment and diagnosis and consideration of a biopsy. Seborrheic dermatitis presents with pruritic erythema in sebaceous gland-rich regions of the body. There may be a greasy yellow scale. It can be self-limited, but at times can become quite severe and symptomatic. Treatment includes topical imidazoles and topical steroids. Patients may also present with eruptive nevi, which is a sudden onset of pigmented lesions on the skin. Therefore, it's important that the child's healthcare provider conduct a full body skin exam prior to starting on targeted therapy. Lesions should be monitored and any changes should be documented. Referral to dermatology may be needed for suspicious lesions. Now, let's move on to MEK inhibitors. For MEK inhibitors, common side effects include morbilliform rash, alopecia, changes in hair color, acneform rash, cirrhosis, and paronychia. Let's go through each one by one. Morbilliform rash and alopecia are both side effects of BRAF and MEK inhibitor therapy. Their treatments have been previously reviewed. Other changes to the hair seen with MEK inhibitors include changes in hair color. An acneform rash is papulopustular. This means that there are raised red bumps, called papules, as well as lesions containing white or yellow pus, called pustules. While the rash looks very similar to typical acne, there are no white heads or black heads, known as comedones. The head, neck, and upper torso are more commonly affected, 
usually in a symmetrical distribution. A similar rash, known as a folliculocentric eruption, can present with a follicular distribution anywhere on the body. Treatment involves counseling on gentle skin care. For grade one, patient can take dilute bleach baths and may be prescribed low potency topical steroids. The patient may also be prescribed topical clindamycin or topical dapsone to control inflammation. For grade two, mid-potency topical steroids and oral antibiotics can be used. Doxycycline or minocycline can be used for children over eight years old, and macrolides or cephalaxin can be used for those less than eight years old. For grade three, dermatology input may be required for consideration of other systemic therapies, including steroids or retinoids. Dose reduction or discontinuation may also be required. In xerosis, you will see dry and scaling patches. There may be diffuse areas of dryness on the body and or cracking at the corners of the lips. In terms of treatment, counsel on dental skin care. For grade one, Emphasize dry skin care with emollients. Low-potency topical steroids may be added if needed. For grades 2 and 3, the patient can take dilute bleach baths and may be prescribed a mid-potency topical steroid ointment. Paronychia is inflammation around the nail. It can be identified by redness, swelling, or cracked skin around the nails. Sometimes, infection goes along with this inflammation. To treat paronychia, counsel your patients on nail care. Refer to our video on tips for nail care for more details. You should also examine the nail to rule out acute infection or abscess, which would require oral antibiotics or incision and drainage. Consider swabs for bacterial culture if signs of infection are present. For grade 1 toxicities, the patient can do warm soaks with dilute bleach or vinegar three times a day, and tension taping at night may be considered. For grades two and three, add a mid to high potency topical steroid ointment and or topical mupirocin. Consider oral antibiotics if there are signs of acute infection or swabs for bacterial culture are positive. Dose reduction or discontinuation may be required. Patients may also be on combination BRAF and MEK inhibitor therapy. In these cases, you may expect to see skin side effects of both drugs, but there are generally lower rates of skin toxicities overall. Grading and management should be the same as previously explained. Of course, there are many other potential skin toxicities of BRAF and MEK inhibitors not covered in this module. If you are unsure about any cutaneous changes, consult your local dermatologist. You have reached the end of this module. By now, you should know how to estimate body surface area and determine the grade of skin side effects, as well as how to identify and manage common skin side effects of BRAF and MEK inhibitors.